So today we're going to talk about 13 painful ways men use women. And I just want to say warning, this is a trigger alert. It's a reality check. Um, this is going to be a rant in a few moments. So bear with me. Um, before we begin, begin, though, I just want to say I feel as though that I sound like a pessimist, okay, if I'm being really honest with you all. And, and my intent is not to be a pessimist. My intent is to give kind of a reality check on the temperature gauge of what I observe in the dating marketplace. And so um, I know it might seem frustrating, the idea of being used by somebody, the idea that that would even happen. And yet what I've witnessed and what I've observed is there's a significant percentage of human beings, men and women alike, who are deeply wounded in uh, their childhood or their past relationships. And there's an old saying, broke, hurt people, I was going to say broken people, but hurt people hurt others. So if you've been hurt by someone, it's most likely that this person is already a hurting person in some way, shape, or form. You just haven't uncovered what it is that caused them to, for lack of a better word, hurt you. At the same time, I, I do believe that there is an importance that we take ownership in our lives, both our individual ownership, but also taking, taking some I don't want to, maybe ownership isn't the right word, but being a bit, for lack of a better word, chivalrous, particularly for men. You know, I, I said this is going to be a rant. I'm going to say there are a lot of cowardice men out there. And at the same time, there's just as many, there's a significant percentage of women who give their power away to men. So no wonder it's a mess out there in the dating marketplace. So if you can relate to any of these, the most important thing that we have to address is that you be, your, your spider senses are aware. Ladies, I've been told you are supposed to have this great sense of intuition. You should have fully cultivated spider senses. And yet oftentimes, the minute we like someone, the minute we feel a connection with someone, we drop all our boundaries, we compromise, we make excuses, we enable, we do all kinds of things for those momentary blips of hope, which is a form of giving your power away. But I'm hoping that if any men are watching this right now, that you actually take ownership in the way you approach relationships. You actually take a level of ownership in the way you treat women and come at it from a place of being a genuine protector of another human being instead of being a taker. And sadly, for unconscious reasons, men have developed a taking attitude. Now, I know a lot of men will say, or a lot of women will hear this rhetoric that the problem with relationships today is feminism, and because women are the boss babe, and they're empowered, and that they all they care about themselves, that they we should go back to some sort of traditional model, where it was very much a one up, one down, where the man was the entire leader of the relationship, and what he said goes, and you just have to listen to everything he says, because he's providing you a home home and food and money to go buy your Gucci bags. Well, let me ask you something. Are men really, I mean, can you really count on another human being for your livelihood? That's taking a big risk. That's taking a big risk to count on someone else. And I'm not to suggest that we shouldn't be in some sort of interdependent type of relationships. But the minute you give up your sovereignty to another human being, which is a lot of that manosphere rhetoric and the red pill rhetoric, from my perspective, I think the minute a woman gives her power away to a man, she possibly sets herself up for failure. And while there are certainly honorable men out there that stand by their word, there's just as many broken human beings out there. And as I said in the beginning of the broadcast, hurt people hurt other people. And that's what we're going to address today. How men have genuinely in a, well, let me reframe that. How they've unconsciously have used women in the guise of, of being um, authentic, if you will. Well, we'll see what happens with this. So again, we're going to give you 13 painful ways men use women. The first one is acting and expressing he wants a relationship. 
acting, expressing he wants his relationship, but his actions say otherwise. It fascinates me how men will say almost anything when they're on the hunt, they're on the chase for physical intimacy. We will say anything. I mean, men can genuinely say some of the most outlandish, outrageous things as to respect to their own individual character and their um, particularly when it comes to wanting a relationship. And yet it fascinates me the minute a man is physically intimate with a woman, all of a sudden, out of the blue, I'm not ready for a relationship. Listen, now I recognize that the word relationship has different meanings to each individual. See, to me, the word relationship has a serious connotation to it in the sense that in my language, of, of, I, I'm seeking a serious, significant relationship, meaning partnership. That's what the word relationship to me is partnership of some sort. But you see, today, relationship can mean hooking up. It could mean friends with benefits. It could mean a situationship, and it could mean a casual relationship. And so the word relationship first has to be identified, are you on the same page with someone? You know, interesting, I shared this um, in a previous video, how I had a telephone date with a woman, meaning I had a telephone call with a woman that I connected through a dating app, okay? And one of the first questions I asked her is, what type of relationship are you looking for? What does commitment mean and look like for you? What does commitment and, and what does it mean to you? But more importantly, what does it look like for you? How often do you want to spend time with someone? Do you want to integrate your life with another human being? Do you want to go on trips together? Do you want to be teammates in each other's lives? Do you want to support each other on a personal or professional level? These are the questions I, I ask on that first telephone call to make sure we're on the same page. And so as I'm sharing these way, painful ways men oftentimes use women, I'm also inviting you to look beyond it and say, how can I, how can I cut, how can I, I was going to say protect myself, but I don't like that terminology. How can I be better prepared when I'm actually vetting another human being? And if you need some support with that, you see this link right here, jonathanasley.com forward slash coaching. There's a link below to get a uh, to schedule a discovery call with me. My whole area of expertise is centered around discernment. And when you're more discerning, you can actually pick up on these clues much faster. But certainly this video is a good start. Number two. He always has excuses about spending time with you. And sometimes when he does it, he makes it your fault. He makes it your fault. So he's always making excuses. Again, this usually happens right after that initial hunt phase when a man has been physically intimate with you. If he's constantly making excuses about spending time with you and occasionally makes it your fault, that's a sure sign you're about to be used. You are being used by this person. And sadly, unfortunately, this happens frequently. I think some men also have a jealous streak inside of them too. Um, so they use, they use this jealousy to give themselves excuses as to spending time with you. Again, they make excuses about spending time with you. They make it your fault. They have jealousy attitudes. They come up with all a variety of different reasons to justify why they can't spend time with you. Number three, he avoids sharing personal things about himself. He avoids sharing personal things about himself. You know, and we have to differentiate. You know, it's interesting. Some men sound like they're like in a gigantic open book. They will tell you all the problems they had in their past relationships. And many of you will view that as intimacy because they shared something about their past. Okay. What I'm really talking about in this particular case is really the emotional, personal things. Those things that are in his heart. Those things that really make him feel insecure, uncertain about himself, shameful. Now, we men have been taught to be stoic and we're not supposed to show our emotions to a woman or to anybody for that matter. But some men might hide personal things 
about their daily life, what they're doing on a regular basis, the people that they spend time with, those personal things about an individual. That's certainly a sign that you most likely will be used by a man. Okay, number four. Now, this is one of my hypotheses. But when a man says, let's take it slow, you know, it's fascinating to me. Okay, now we, I, we ladies, I'm sure you love the idea of taking it slow, right? You love the idea of taking it slow. In other words, don't rush physical intimacy with someone. But I'm talking about the minute you've been physically intimate with a man and all of a sudden he says, I need to take things slow. What that means is I don't want to get emotionally invested in you. In you. I am certainly happy to spend as much time having my penis go inside your vagina on a regular basis, but anything emotional, I need to drag this out because I don't want to be emotionally responsible for you. I don't want to show emotions to you because most likely it's the physical aspect of the relationship he's interested and not the deeper aspects of a relationship, which are those intimacy is into me, you see. Think of, write that down. Someone write that down. Intimacy. Into me, you see. I don't know where, I forgot where I heard that. But that's genuine intimacy. And if you're willing, the thing is, it's in fact, um, <laughs> um, I think it was uh, Matthew Hussey. I heard him on a video recently say, go slow and then g jump in and go fast. I think relationship, like it's fascinating to me. Um, if you ever watch the show, uh, well, think about The Bachelor, think about Love is Blind, think about Married at First Sight. It's all about jumping into the deep end as fast as possible to determine if there's true compatibility. I don't believe in taking things slow. I think the minute two people are physically intimate with each other, spend a lot of time together out figuring out if you're really compatible with one another. Maybe do a little bit of that ahead of time. But certainly, I think when someone says, let's take it slow after physical intimacy, that's a sure sign. He's just not that into you, and you most likely will be used. Again, some people have different perceptions on this. And by the way, I just want to reiterate something. Um, I, I, I find Matthew Hussey's content fantastic. Highly recommend going to his channel. Check out his content. Brilliant Um He's one of the top relationship coaches. I, I gain a lot of value watching his content. I recommend you go there as well. Okay, number five. He talks to other women constantly, but complains or, or com, uh, uh, but claims, not complains, he claims it's all friendly. It's all friendly. Look at. I have some female friends in my life. I, I mean, I have, I have female clients, okay? So I'm, I'm unusual in this case. The average person that has multiple, 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 multiple female friends, and they're all friendly, and it's mostly on, they use social media to connect with these people. These are men that are probably on some, social media is almost another form of pornography to some degree. And I don't believe that men have, dozens of female friends and they're all again you know he talks to women all the time and it's all friendly that's most likely a sign that he's just not that into you and that he's most likely going to use you and i get that this is painful to hear i said this is warning this is a reality check you know this is a, a trigger alert if you will okay number six his conversations with you are rather surface. You know, text messages. How's your day going? Did you have a good day? I hope you had a good day. You know, it seems to me that most people, their conversations are so centered around. I mean, again, it's important to kind of talk about your day with someone, but it's it's so surface. It's not deeper than what's just, now again, there's a there is that what's happening now is rather important. But I think in relationship, I really invite people to go beyond the surface and really evaluate the, the temperature gauge of the relationship, to evaluate the synergy within the relationship, to evaluate the uh, direction the relationship is headed. Those are some of the most important conversations I have on a regular basis when, like I said, when the penis is going inside the vagina on a regular basis, 
the conversation about the relationship in and of itself is critically important instead of knowing, oh, you went and worked out today. Great. Thanks for giving me that intel. <laughs> okay, number seven. He breaks up with you constantly and tries to get back together. Oh my God, I see this all the time. I don't know, I can't tell you how many women who have gone through my coaching program, been with men that they break up with you and they get back together and break up with you and get back together. Is that really the kind of relationship you want? Isn't that painful to go through that form of abuse? You know, the word use also has the word abu abuse, has the word use in it. And it saddens me. Look at, um, you know, look at, we can all have a blip in our relationship, one breakup, maybe possibly two. But for, and I say maybe possibly two. But if this is a repetitive cycle, one day on, one day off, one day on, one day off, one day on, one, look at, that's a form of abuse in my mind. Run, Forrest, run, run as fast as you can. Number eight. He's selfish in the bedroom. By the way, I mean, that's like, to me, that's just bullshit. To be only caring about your own needs. Now, I recognize that there is a level of individual satisfaction that comes with the bedroom. But I think a person who only cares about their own needs, you know, they're, they're, they're not attentive to their partner through physical intimacy. It's only about ejaculation. You know, that's that's just another form of use, in my opinion, and that's painful to experience. And to some degree, we do men have our blinders on, but I'd like to think that in a healthy relationship, there's an intent to actually want to please your partner. Like there's a desire to want to do that. And certainly some men only care about getting off, and that's a painful way to be used. Okay, number nine. He teases you. Now, what I mean by teases you, he introduces you to important people in his life, okay? But then he's flaky. He's just flaky. I know this could be flaky, but I think that's a tease to, to introduce somebody into those an important person in your life and then be so disconnected on building a relationship. You have to wonder what kind of psyche, you know, I, I think if I, you know, and I ask yourself, if you've been introduced to somebody in their life, when you introduce someone that you're seeing to the important people in your life, that, that relationship has meaning. So to be flaky with communication after that is just another form of abuse, which as we said, abuse is use. Okay. Number 10, he gets sex from you but he won't post pictures of you on social media. And add to that, he has a lot of friends, okay? In other words, he's secret about, secretive about you to the people in his life, and he's secretive certainly through social media. If you ever come across a man who has lots of, now, I've gotta be careful because I have lots of female friends on my uh, Facebook. Um, did I say YouTube earlier? I'm going to say Facebook or social media, Instagram. Um, but I'm an exception. I'm in a business where I work with women. But I'm just saying, if someone is a has an ordinary, you know, he's a fire a fireman or a policeman or something like that, you know, he's not like he's going to have 8,000 female people following him. So if he has a lot of female friends and he's unwilling to share your life on together on social media, well, I'm private. Yeah, why do you need that many friends if you're so private? Just some things to be aware of. Okay, number 12. He uses you as his therapist. Now, I'm going to say a lot of people enter into relationship, you know, emotionally unhealthy people enter into relationship and they actually form a bond together often through their own individual traumas, where they actually act like therapists to one another. And so they share a lot of personal problems, a lot of venting with the, you know, with an, uh, no disrespect, but I'm going to say an unqualified person. Um, and so what happens is I, I look at trauma bonding in a different sense. I look at people who have deep individual traumas 
and they're bonding together in their mutual, you know, individual traumas, but mutually bonding together. And what happens is they act like therapists to one another. And sadly, when that one, one individual gets healed, they oftentimes leave the relationship. And I just don't think that's a healthy way to enter into a relationship through this trauma bonding, if you will. And that's, I'm using that term in a different context than the way it's originally attended. Number 12, he uses you for money. In other words, he's in a state of hardship and he needs money from you. You know, folks, look, at we all sometimes can use help, but you have to look at a person's life, their pattern, and you can you start to see patterns of abuse, particularly when it comes to money. There are men who who uh, will prey on women for financial purposes. They suck you in in the beginning, and then they also start siphoning out from the other end. And I think that is cruel um, to do that to another person to use them for financial means. This happens not a lot, but enough to where it's noticeable. It's enough to where it's noticeable. And the last one, 13, he avoids commitment conversations. He avoids commitment conversations. Folks, if somebody is avoiding a commitment conversation, but they're having regular intimacy with you, they're having regular sex with you, that penis is going inside the vagina on a regular basis, that, and you, okay, let me be clear. Everything I said is predicated on you wanting commitment. So if you want commitment and he avoids commitment conversations, that's a guy that has most likely very little intent to going beyond the surface with you other than a, ca a, a friend with benefits, a casual relationship. Now, again, and a uh, situationship, that sort of thing. Now, you're more than welcome to enter any of those into any of those relationships, but do it with awareness if you're going to choose it. If two, two people are in integrity with one another, you can do whatever kind of relationship you want. But if you genuinely want a significant relationship, and he said a lot of the things I said earlier, but he avoids those conversations, you will most likely have a painful experience when he ends the relationship at some point later on down the road. Trusting commitment. In fact, if you're not familiar with the book, Eight Dates by Doctors John and Julie Gottman, I highly recommend reading chapter one before you are ever out there dating and certainly maybe even reading these chapter, chapter one together about trust and commitment before sleeping with someone. Because remember, most likely you're meeting a stranger. If he cared about your feelings, he would actually be aware of everything I just shared, and he'd be mindful not to put you into a position of actually using you because he is actually in a state of integrity with himself. And yet, sadly, many men and women are not in integrity with themselves. I've been guilty of this, folks. I was a very unconscious person after my divorce. I was a total train wreck. And I recognized, and, and I was seeking, I needed companionship, connection, and sex with women. I mean people, but I mean women because I'm heterosexual. And yet I wasn't really in a good place. And as I said before, hurt people hurt others. And I was rather hurt in that point in my life. And I chose not or I, chose, I didn't choose to do the inner work as I've done today. So I can share all this with you. And my intent for everybody is to do a fair amount of individual work. This is the reason why I wrote my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? A Journey of Personal Development, Self-Help, and Spiritual Work. There's a link below to get all the books I recommend. Hey, did this content resonate with you? If it did, post a comment. I'd like to hear all your thoughts. As always, if you found value in this video, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel. Hit that notification bell so you can be notified of new videos. And by the way, if you want to connect with me in the links in the show notes, you can schedule a discovery call with me. You can join my group called Midlife Love Mastery. You can get the books I recommend. You can join my mailing list. You can find me on Instagram. You can get my dating vows all listed below and in the first comment as well.